Hey guys, good morning. It's uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. No, it's Wednesday. <laughs> I mean, the exact specifics, they don't really bother me that much. I just know I got to get up, go for a walk, and get a hamburger. That's why I'm here at Basic Burger. <laughs> So over there, guys, is the Pentagon, and outside on this face of the Pentagon is where the 9-11 attack took place. There's a memorial there, but it's closed due to COVID, as are Pentagon tours. As soon as they reopen, I'm going to take you guys out there, but for now, about as close as I can get you to the Pentagon is the parking lot. So down here, those trees that you see uh, planted now, that's the memorial, and the hit is right there in the middle. Now uh, now they've added all these new fence walls. They even built a new heliport down here. The heliport is now over here. So with the protest this weekend, this is a pretty common sight. This is a cow. Cellular on wheels. This is a portable cell tower that is driven in before big events on the National Mall and strategically positioned around the area to provide service to the thousands of people who are gonna be here. We'll probably see a few other cows in other locations. So guys, over the last few days, I've gotten a few questions from you and I've tried to explain them in the comments, but you know, it's probably just easier for me to show. One question I'm getting a lot is where is the snow? Yeah, you know, yeah, Sunday I walked through a blizzard and I showed you Washington DC. And well, today it's all gone. And like I figured out earlier, it is Wednesday. And what I can't really show you is that right now it's 53 degrees Fahrenheit, yeah? Yesterday, it was 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And the day before that, it was 39 degrees Fahrenheit, and it rained for like six to eight hours overnight. So the snow, what little of it you can see left, is over here. It's all melted. Washington, D.C. is kind of a southern city. When we get snow, it doesn't really stick around that long. Never fear, though. There's always more coming. Tomorrow it's going to snow again, and maybe even on the weekend. It'll probably be gone by Monday. C'est la vie. So as I did mention, it is about 53 degrees. It's kind of a nice day for a little walk. Still a bit of a chill in the air. But uh, we're down on the National Mall. I wanted to show you something I saw from my car the other day. But first, let's take a look at this, because it's just so funky. This is the Arts and Industry building, the second oldest of the Smithsonian's, and the one that just reopened after a nearly 20-year closure. Now, I took you on a tour inside there, oh, about a month and a half ago. You can see that video if you click up at the top right. But it's just so pretty. Yeah, it's just so funky. All right, let's make our way down here past the castle, the Smithsonian Castle which is the visitor center for the Smithsonian Museum. Basically, it's a good place to take your kids if they have to go to the bathroom. Not a bad idea then. So we're going back through the gardens of the Smithsonian's visitor center. And there you can see the arts and industry building over on my left. It was structurally deficient. Uh, they were going to think actually talking about tearing it down, which would have been a travesty. Uh, and in the end, they kept it open. I mean, they kept it from being torn down, but it was closed to the general public for nearly two decades, only to be reopened recently. All right, let's go in here. Whoops. More gardens over here on the left. That's the Department of Energy across the street. Hey, there's some snow. See, there's still some plow debris here and there. All right, let's run inside. So it's a, basically a gift shop. <laughs> Shermer Hall. <laughs> That's the original model for the castle. James Renwick, the architect. Hmm. Let's go back here. There's a few more things back here now. <sighs> what do we got? 
artsy fartsy things. That's from the Asian Art Museum and the African Art Museum. This is from the Air and Space Museum. This is Chuck Yeager's helmet. That's kind of cool. And that was from Wiley Post. You guys know Wiley Post? Wiley Post was a famous aviator in the 1930s. That's a big bird-eating tarantula. Ugh. American history, Brian Boitano's figure skates. <laughs> Whose are these? Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe's hockey skates. Jackie Stewart's crash helmet. So yeah, this is basically a preview of what you can see at the other museums. Castle Cafe, overpriced sandwiches in a plastic bag. <laughs> All right, so we are out of the museum and let's make our way down this way. Oh, shoot. So over on the other side from the castle is the Natural History Museum. That's bugs and diamonds and dinosaurs and bones and stuff like that. Art galleries up there. The Capitol down at the end of the mall. And swinging around this way, we've got the American History Museum over there. Mm, we haven't been there in a while, but... Hey, it's Washington, D.C., and it's got to be a protest. There's going to be a big protest this Friday. Over here, you can see a stage being set up. So this is where the National Right to Life or March for Life protest is going to take place on Friday takes place every year on the anniversary of Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade was decided in January and they have marched through snow and rain and cold for over 40 years it seems. Setting up for these is a big deal. I mean you got space heaters, you've got speaker systems, you've got the plastic flooring they put down. I mean, look at that speaker. Let's so lift it up. They've got a press gallery set up. They're already setting up some cameras there. Probably going to do some tests. There you go, marchforlife.org. So that'll be Friday, I think at noon. At noon, they're going to march up to the U.S. Capitol uh, at the Supreme Court. Here are some sandbags. You guys always like to see sandbags. These sandbags are really old. I mean, they're like ripping apart. They've been out here for a long time. Sandbags guarding the subway system's grates. These are air vents and emergency exits for the subway system. The Smithsonian Station is directly below me. And actually, I think this is a vent. Where are we? Because the, the train turns kind of this way and heads over towards the Trump Hotel, the old post office pavilion over there. So these must be exit ramps for emergency exits. Boy, this grass is going to get pulverized if they have tens of thousands of people out here on it, which is what I think they hope to have this Friday. And as of course, I'll be around. We'll show you some coverage from that. I know a lot of you want to see it. Some of you may even be coming out here for it. What's down there is the Washington Monument. The Lincoln Memorial is behind the Washington Monument. We're not going to go that far today. Uh, we'll maybe go over towards the White House. Well, there's another cow over there. Let's go take a closer look at the cow. Because they're kind of cool. Uh, so there it is. And that'll be going up shortly to provide additional mobile phone service for this area. The mall is actually kind of a dead zone for mobile phones. I hate streaming here. The reason is there's just not a lot of towers. They don't put towers on the National Mall. Occasionally they have them on some of the buildings. 
Oh, Verizon. So that's a Verizon tower. It's gonna pop up. I wonder how much one of those things costs. I bet it's a bunch. Oh boy, not a lot of hot dog options today. Just that guy with his Philadelphia cheesesteaks. I don't feel like that. I feel like a hot dog. Oh, so there are a few, few cell phone uh, signal tower thingies up on the side of the Department of Commerce. Not a lot, but uh, I guess that helps out a little bit. And then there's one over there. There's three or four more over on EPA. They're actually painted the same color as the building. Kind of try to blend in. So the uh, pro-choice movement has already put up some posters in anticipation of the March for Life. There'll be a, I'm sure there'll be a counter protest. I don't know if it'll be anywhere near the size, but it's, uh, it's possible. That street vendor tells me that Trump stuff outsells Biden stuff. I asked him the other day. Most of them are pretty neutral. Oh, it's 50-50 is what they tell me. But he was like, no, nah, no, nah, I sell more Trump stuff. See those little little Christmas trees over there, and you can hear some construction equipment over here on the east fence, on the East Executive Avenue. There, they're still working. Actually, it's kind of like one of their little construction headquarters. They've got like a couple trailers pulled over there. There's that fence, same that we've seen up on the White House. Christmas tree. Oh, I got uh, actually got the diggers moving across the lawn today, in and out of the garden. So I told you they did make a little pathway for the diggers to go without destroying the grass. So there's like an elevated pallet pathway. It's a bunch, of, a bunch of pallets. Don't mind me, I'm crashing my scooter. This is the Eisenhower Executive Office building. When you were asking about this yesterday, I go by it every day, so I don't really point it out, but it is a gorgeous building. I hear a chainsaw. Maybe my video yesterday making fun of the limbs not being cleaned got through. No, maybe they just hired a crew today to trim this tree. Did they trim the one that was broken? <laughs> the one out, yeah, they did, they removed it. See? Making YouTube videos gets action done. <laughs> the tree that had fallen for a week is now gone. <laughs> I feel I have accomplished something. There's the Blair House, the official guest residence of the White House in the United States. Foreign heads of state are allowed to stay here, as are, you know, other distinguished visitors. The Bush family stayed there. Uh, when they went to the funeral of the elder Bush, uh, President Trump allowed them to stay in the Blair House as a courtesy. The evangelical presidential candidate is here. The dogs are out. And the fence. Oh, the gate's open. You can actually see inside today. So what do we see inside? Mm, some construction flies. It looks like some extra material back there. You can see those flags, the red and white flags on the ground. There's the fountain behind it. So there's a bit of dirt dug up and some other stuff in the back, part of the construction project. My understanding is that they're building a conduit to put all the telecommunications and the plumbing system that goes all around the White House and they have to connect existing structures like the sprinkler system or the fountain 
or existing telecom tunnels slash conduits into this new conduit. And so this is probably part of that overall $19 million project that was started in 2019 or something like that, according to the government contract I was able to find for Whiting Turner. Speaking of, who is on the side of that truck? Let me see if I can get a closer picture. I can't make out the name on the side of the truck. Maybe from the other side. Still can't make it out. So this woman is running for president on the evangelical born again ticket that she kind of created. Ultimately bringing Adam down with her. So TV crew over here with a man on the street interview camera. In this angle you can actually see inside a little bit because we're up at a higher elevation. They didn't paint the inside. But you know those hot voices just, in your head are kind of like what I flag. say back behind the press group. I thought there was like a gaggle going on, but no, it's just a bunch of cameramen throwing all their gear together at the end of the press tent. There's no Marine at the moment, which would mean the president is not in the Oval Office at the moment. I don't know if they've declared a lid already. It's kind of early, but <laughs> sometimes we get early lids. A lid means that nothing of... Uh, reportable value will take place. No more statements, no more photo ops. Uh, a lid basically releases a lot of the press guys to go home, uh, and go on with their day. I mean, usually they declare a lid after dinner. So this is East Executive Avenue. This used to be a road that you could drive down back, well, when I first moved to Washington, even before then. I think Reagan administration, they closed that and turned it into parking. The first of many closures. If you watch All the President's Men, there's actually a scene where a taxi cab pulls out of that street with uh, Woodward and Bernstein in it. Kind of a funny scene nowadays. And it's all closed up. Let's get out of here. Whoa. Great. And I didn't record what I just said. <laughs> okay. Let's go back. So this memorial is a memorial to the original landowners of the grounds that were used to make the District of Columbia. It's really hard to make it out because uh, whatever is just sort of faded away in time. To the original patents prior to 1700 whose land grants made the site of the city or something like that, erected by the Societies of the Daughters of American Colonists, 1936. So there's some land names. They got dates like 1660s, 1663. So I guess those were the folks who had the land, oh, well before the district was set up. So the Secret Service are going a little nuts up here by the Vice President's house. The Vatican Embassy. These guys are going to just cut me off. Cause... But it looks like someone's getting arrested at the embassy. I don't know why. Fences kicked over. Did he do that? All fences ripped up there. So, guys, we're at the uh, Vatican's Embassy where it looks like. A car may have crashed into the fence. I'm not sure if that was today or another day. I'm not sure. There's a guy getting arrested, though. Kind of bizarre. Okay, so this was two nights ago. Not today. This is just some random protester. So guy with some issues is being arrested. Uh, this protest is unrelated to the car accident, which was just a random car accident the other night in the snow. So, life in the big city. So guys, that was my day. I'm going to get this video up. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. going to give you coverage of the protests going on this weekend and, well, whatever else we see going on. I think Biden's off to Camp David, so we're going to see Marine One pretty soon. All right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.